Thank you, Macarena. Good morning, everyone. We now start with this panel. And as we see from the title, the objective is that Canel, LACNIC can um, recognize the winners of the FRIDA Awards. For those of you who are not familiar with the FRIDA Awards, FRIDA is a LACNIC fund that seeks to provide support to those initiatives that contribute to the strengthening of the internet in our region. Specifically, 2020 was a very special year for FRIDA because we established three new focus points or funding lines, which we think are more aligned with the vision we have for the internet as a community and as an organization. These lines seek to promote those qualities of as or aspects of the internet, which we understand are crucial for the region. The three no new topics are to promote internet stability, to open nature of the internet and free nature of the internet in the sense of promoting diversity and digital rights and also to promote connectivity or access to the internet. So for each of these axes, the jury of the FIDA program selected a special initiative which stood out for its focus and scope. These are the ones that we will be looking at in this panel with us. We have Luis Arancivia representing LAC TLD, who won the FRIDA Award on Stability and Security. Then we have Eve Alcala from the Mexican organization Luchadoras, who together with her colleagues, with colleagues developed the initiative LAC NICA, who won the award on the open and free internet. And to close, we have Felipe from Comurrede, from Brazil, who won the FRIDA Award in the category Access to the Internet. So now let us now have a conversation with the winners. I propose starting with Luis, who is a well-known colleague from the community so that he can tell us about the LAC TLD project. Luis, please turn on your camera and microphone and I also invite the other two awardees to turn on the cameras so we can see the entire group. Hello, Luis. How are you? Hi, Carolina. Greetings to everyone. Luis, so we will start with you. Tell us what this new minicast is about TLD and what inspired you as an organization to embark on a collaborative project of this nature. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for the award on behalf of the board that I chair and on behalf of the organization CTLD. We are very satisfied for having received this award. And the concept goes back to 2016 to a board meeting that we had in Bogota. This became a reality in the LAC IGF meeting towards the end of that year, 2016. And to tell the truth, what was the motivation for this? Well, this led us to think about this project based on the idea of introducing into LAC DAD a new option. Several initiatives came up, but this was a change in the paradigm regarding the relationship between the members and the organization. That is, the association through its members starts to collaborate, to provide service and to support uh, each other in, uh, uh, and, uh, in its different requirements. In this case, strengthening the infrastructure and improving the quality of service. The idea appeared um, uh, and uh, further developed uh, through the contribution of the leaders in the project. In this case, I, Hugo Salgado from NIC Chile and Federico Neves from NIC Brazil, Carlos Martinez of LACNIC, because they were the leaders that uh, pushed 
for the development. This project at, at present has nine nodes and a significant number of clients that, uh, and the essential thing in terms of the quality and type of service is that the CCTLDs, and that's the magic of the project, the CCTLDs that are stronger from the technological point of view uh, ease resources to those that have uh, requirements, uh, lesser uh, capacity, they get integrated at low cost and they exchange service in such a way that they may promote uh, strengthening collaboration and the construction of community, creation of community through the provision of services. So this is a service where you have a, a learning community providing a service that has a high demand by the nodes. I'm going to close because um, now uh, it's, we need to mention who is part of the infrastructure in a cloud because first of all, we need to highlight who believes in the project. Nick Argentina, Nick Brazil, Nick Chile, Nick Colombia, Nick Costa Rica, Nick Czech Republic, Nick Mexico, Latnac, uh, LACNIC, uh, clients, Costa Rica, Pontificia Universidad Católica Madre Maestra Santo Domingo, NIC Ecuador, NIC, uh, Networking Technology Group, University of Guatemala, University of Guyana, Network of Sustainable Development on, in Honduras, dot VR, El Salvador, dot TT of Trinidad and Tobago, dot UI of Uruguay, and uh, LACNIC as clients. Um, we are very, very happy. And the most significant thing is that this prize, this award also uh, is a drive to introduce new uh, modalities of operation. And we have a new list of clients that are eager to be, to receive the services. And we are very happy and we're very grateful for having received this award that is also a gift to a community who believed in the project. Excellent. A pleasure to hear you, Luis. It's, it's been a project that uh, involved many, many actors, and it's really a, an example of a regional cooperation. I'd like to ask another question to go more in depth. Show, could you show the uh, links with the uh, categories of the themes of Frida. Could you tell us of the importance of the Anycast service and what are the improvements that Anycast brings to the internet? Well, of course, I'm going to highlight a number of uh, key points as is uh, described in the website of the project. The key projects of the new Anycast is first of all, better administration of the burden, uh, better movements, strengthens resilience and robustness, and improves the infrastructure of those that participate because it better contributes to the time of response to each of the clients that, uh, and it permits the strengthening and the resilience of the of uh, the clients and the nodes. So it is an improvement in the use of infrastructure of all the participants through this, that is the magic that binds this community, that is collaboration and shared learning. Wonderful. And the last item, one of the things that the jury of Frida highlighted, this program this FRIDA program is highly competitive. This year we received 500 applicants and those who help us uh, select uh, the uh, uh, winners is the jury that are community experts. And uh, in your case, we they highlighted that there were countries that could have developed, wouldn't have been able to deploy their root service without this initiative. So in closing, Luis, what could you tell us about the regional impact of the project and this vision of collaboration 
with the countries that wouldn't have been able to use the service well essentially let's see the key idea of the collaboration is to share the infrastructure available from the most advanced that is the nodes that have installed capacity and experience and that so that and the clients who because of cost or because of technological infrastructure they cannot access services of this kind either because it's not under the radar of their uh, possibilities and there is somebody with technological soundness and experience in in the provision of services that makes it easier for them and that interaction is the big advantage and the big strength of this iteration that we succeeded in generating so the number of clients that are expecting to uh, join it is showing that through this collaboration shared project we're giving a signal and it is that in the end not everything needs to be bought in the market but that there is another possibility and it is making the most uh, uh, leveraging the possibilities of those that are more developed that can help out the others thank you Luis now i'd like to travel to mexico and see eve who will speak about the la clica uh, project eve could you tell us what the initiative uh, la clica la clica is all about thank you everybody thank you for the invitation la clica precisely uh, we started planning it in 2017 together with uh, a group that uh, is Santiago Digital. Uh, they, they make uh, um, uh, and and luchadoras, who's also a feminist organization, and mm, we have conducted uh, two years uh, um, in the internet to create uh, a feminist internet. Given the structural violence that we saw in the physical spaces, this um we decided to look at the digital space and precisely the idea was to create a communications campaign translated in a web comic that we put together is this is a is an audience especially for young people um and especially women and non uh binary um um, classes and after all after uh, giving an account of uh, the violence that uh, women uh, experienced in the digital uh, media we decided to send a message to the cyberspace and physically through this campaign that is called la clica libres en línea like to gang girl and that is that gave rise to la clica with three key um logo uh, motos no es tu culpa it's not your fault you are not alone and uh, it's a reality so in the cartoon the um it's this is a story plus a repository that is the galaxy block where there are different resources to pre to face the digital violence uh, together uh, the digital violence to um women and uh, other communities that is how la clica originated thank you now to help us see the dimension because this is also interesting for the internet what is the impact of uh, the uh, gender violence online that we see attacking women and other sexual uh entities uh, uh, groups Ooh, to what extent does it have an impact well precisely because of the repositories and the because we are in touch with uh, uh, activists fem uh, feminist or trans or whatever we realized that just because women put their voice in the digital voice they were attacked in, in the digital world 
So we still see a separation between the real world and the virtual world. We saw that uh, there is actually a continuum. If women are attacked outside the internet, uh, the women are still um, attacked in the internet. So there is no difference between uh, the violence uh, behind the screens, in front of the screens, because of defending uh, the freedom of expression or because of being a feminist and uh, operating a feminist movement. So that we give a chance to the more marginal voices and focus on them and to uh, act as activists from uh, the digital world. So the first thing that occurs when women are uh, uh, victims of a uh, a violence um, and remember that not everybody has access to the internet there are privileged people like myself that have access but there are many that don't so we need to be as activists or fighters we are a means of communication and just because we, uh, if we see this uh, um, uh, we want to be activists it's not because we are against, but sometimes because we suffer the attacks. Or even the journalists, female journalists, when they go to an interview or to cover, or just when they are doing the work and they receive attacks and organized attacks. So all of this, uh, luchadoras also learned from other colleagues, thanks to, thanks to AAPC, the Association for the Progress of Communication, Social Tech, and other fighters, female fighters, uh, activists. So this uh, community, we learned that we need to speak out. It's called digital violence, and it needs to be punished in in Mexico, we don't have cyber police, but we under what uh, is uh, the justice and redressing for the women who are attacked mm, because it, um, it happens through a uh, screen. Does, it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt us and uh, our work. The internet and the digital space is an excellent tool to get it. So linking it to what you just said, I have a very short question. We see many initiatives working on online gender related violence that invite women to be careful, to take care, uh, to protect themselves. You have a different message that is don't abandon the online space. You have the right to use it as you want to. What could you say about that? Well, that's precisely very important because when we created we saw the field of poss possibilities uh, and we saw the messages that were sent uh, to uh, to girls such as sexting uh, making them feel guilty saying don't do that don't use those tools and uh, so it was as don't uh, uh, enjoy the, the your right of, of expression um, so we wanted to avoid that. So we said we, we didn't want to ban anything, but we wanted to, women to explain that the sp space is there so that you can build it, not just to use it, but also internet creators, because we don't see ourselves like that. Although women have been there since the inception of the internet, since we started using this high technology. But precisely the message was, you are not alone. What may happen is that we isolate ourselves. And it's right, when I was attacked for the first time, I left Instagram because I was not expecting the, those pictures, but it was like uh, coming back, but with support. The idea is not to use many layers and uh, promote fear, but to tell women that they have the tools. The idea is so that you can choose and then really practice your rights. And yes, we do have tools and there are also practices mostly that we can learn among all of us in order to really continue in the digital space, both for being activists or for practicing our 
rights for freedom, uh, freedom of expression or our sexual rights. So the message is that because it's not your fault, it's real, you're not alone, and to provide different tools and different voices so that those who reach then allow you to make uh, decisions. So that is the focus of the Laclica campaign. We're going to organize something with young people and the repository of the contents is changing and we encourage you to visit it. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to listen to you. E. So let us now go to Felipe from Amrede. He's going to speak in Portuguese. So Welcome, Felipe, and tell you about tell us about what Comorrede is, also so that we know what communities are going to respond to, and what are the connectivity solutions that you are providing. Can I, Felipe? Hola a todos. Felipe, hi. We I'm delighted to be here with you. And Como Rede was created by us. I'm the creator and the director to provide free internet in the periphery of cities. In Brazil, half of the population does not have access to the internet. And this is quite serious when we add economic problems to this. And when we think about who has earns a minimum wage, then this increases the percentage to 50 or 60 people who don't have access to the internet. So we created a community network which provides internet services free of charge. And that network today is in the city of Niteroi, who has, covers the needs of 250,000 people. They receive free internet. This is something that we are seeing with other community-based groups in order to replicate this in other communities, not only in Niteroi and Rio de Janeiro. There was a strong component of innovation that IoT used to respond to a specific need of the communities in the periphery regarding water supply. So what can you tell us about this component and also how this was articulated with the network that you set up? Well, what was the situation? There are many, many free network initiatives in Brazil and also with other countries. We, we work close with other countries too. So the situation is that many free networks have difficulties in order to generate resources on their own account, for example, for maintaining the operation of the network. We started thinking about that, namely how a community network could deal with other issues in addition to the internet. So we started considering other common things that were lacking. There are many things in common, more than differences. One of the major problems is the lack of water supply. This, about 15% of the population has problems with access to water. There are 850 municipalities that are in a critical situation in the periphery of cities who have only water supply three times a week. So based on that, we set up a network of sensors with IoT, with the Internet of Things. We identified where there was a lack of water. And then we joined this weakness of the difficulties, for example, for generating our own resources. We joined this with the problem of water scarcity. So we notified the people through of the locality with SMS when we're going to receive water. So through the census, we identify that. So whenever water is flowing, we notify the inhabitants that water is coming. 
And once we send out this alert, there we have this functionality. So this was implemented at the end of last year. So to this, we added some publicity. So in addition to saying we are going to receive water today, this also has some kind of publicity, for example, um, some offer that you have at a bakery or, or a professional or someone in the neighborhood, so that all that ecosystem, all that chain is from that area of the periphery. So really, we can speak about empowerment, but really we work together. So we set up that internet of things with local publicity. So it's working through that community network. And this is like a, a source of income for us. So because everything was done in open source, the proposal that we set up with community networks, the feature is that it is inhabitants that manage this publicity. They also work and the different issues. So I invite everyone who wishes to, to visit us, you can come and see our network. This is an open project. So happy to see you all. Thank you, Felipe. It's great to see how you work to consider connectivity by placing the communities right at the core of this. So this is really a feature of your initiative. So congratulations on that. We only have a few minutes left, and we have one question. I'd like to invite Paula Ortega from back staff to read out the questions. Hola, Caro. Muchas gracias. Hello, sí. Caro. Thank you very much. Let me read the question. Mark Irvin's question is for Eve. There, there is a continuum between the real and the digital world, but isn't this violence not uh, enhanced by the fact that this is an anonymous uh, attack in the one affecting your community. Oh, yes, precisely. From what we have experienced with other colleagues, this could also be in favor as it's very easy to include comments in the media through false accounts because people do anonymity, so you don't know who is behind this. But ultimately, it is people who are trying out those violence attacks. I know there is a difference compared to the real world. Most of the time, in the real world, you can see people in the street, your colleagues, your husband or whoever, but in the digital space, the situation is quite different. So this, I think, also enhances violence because you don't know where this comes from. You don't really know who is behind this, and you don't know how much they really know about you. So I think digital violence and building knowledge around all that has many sides to it. You cannot be totally black and white about this, but there are many more things in between. And also regarding the digital rights that you have, if you decide to go over to the legal aspects, there are many things, many pros and many cons, and this depends on each country because there are many sides to all this. There are many actors involved. So this can be enhanced in the digital violence context. And there's is quite different to physical violence because you can see them and it is different. I don't know if this answers the question, but yes, this is an entirely different issue, the right to be anonymous. Excellent. If I have, that would be all. I would like to close this session and on behalf of Black Men, I'd like to congratulate you all on these, these initiatives, these three projects, Eva uh, gives us a notion of the fact that a lot of work 
constraints to begin, and there are also many opportunities out there to build a secure and inclusive internet for the region. So I'd like to take the opportunity to invite the participants at the event to apply to the FIDA 2021 awards. It's a great opportunity for those who are interested in deploying initiatives. I now invite you to read about some of the winning projects uh, for the subsidies this year. Big Argentina won the Autonomous University of Mexico, the Federal University of Rio Grande, the University of Palermo, a key network, and many more organizations. So the idea is that the FIDA program should be a resource for you. So I want you to apply for this award. Thank you very much. And we go back to Macarena.